Let's get a little more difficult now, and we'll find the sine, cosine, and tangent of each acute angle of the two right triangles that I made here. Um, but I would call this more of a medium. All right, so right away you probably noticed that I know two of the side lengths. I know that the hypotenuse is 2 root 10, and I know that the long leg is 6. But I don't know what the short leg is. So before I can even do anything, I need to figure out what that is, because in, in order to get the sine, cosine, and tangent of each acute angle, I'm going to need to know the measures of all of the sides. Okay, so you probably remember the Pythagorean theorem, which just states that uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but really what it means is the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. So what we'll do is we'll call JL, we'll call this side right here x, Okay, ooh, that was a pretty bad X. Let me redraw that. <laughs> we'll call this side X. And all we're going to do is we're going to say, well, then X squared plus 6 squared equals 2 root 10. And then that quantity squared. Okay, so X squared we have to leave. 6 squared we know is 36. Okay, now what is 2 root 10 squared? Well, just remember that when you take a quantity 2 root 10 or 5 root 3 or whatever, and you're squaring it, you're squaring each individual part of it. So it's like 2 squared times root 10 squared, okay? So you can think of it almost as distributing the squared to both parts because this is multiplication, okay? So 2 squared is 4, and the square root of 10 squared is just going to be 10. So then we end up with x squared plus 36 equals 40. Subtract 36 from both sides. You end up with x squared equals 4. And take the square root of both sides. Boom. x equals 2. Perfect. Okay. So now we know that this side, instead of calling it x, we can call it 2. We know that it measures 2. Perfect. So now we can go on and find the sine, cosine, and tangent of each acute angle because we know all the measures of the sides. So let's start with J. Okay. So the sine of J, so the sine of angle J, is just remember, write out Sokotoa at the top. So we know that the sine of an angle is the measure of the um, the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. So in this case, for angle J, opposite is 6. Hypotenuse is 2 root 10. Okay, so then that will simplify to 3 over root 10. Now, we need to rationalize the denominator. So we just multiply by root 10 over root 10. And this becomes the numerator's 3 root 10 and the denominator's 10. Perfect. So the sine of angle J is 3 root 10 over 10. All right, now let's move on to the cosine of J, angle J. Okay, so cosine is, if I look at ka, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 2. Hypotenuse is 2 root 10. So then that simplifies to 1 over root 10, and again, we must rationalize that denominator. So multiply by root 10 over root 10, and that's going to give you root 10 over 10. Perfect. And now for the tangent. So the tangent of angle J, so if we look up here, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 6, adjacent is 2, so the tangent of j is just going to be 6 over 2, which simplifies to 3. All right. So now let's move on to k. So we need to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle k. So the sine of k is just opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 2. Hypotenuse is 2 root 10. And then that simplifies to 1 over root 10. Then we must rationalize. And we end up with root 10 over 10. Perfect. 
Now let's do the cosine. Cosine of k, angle k, is just adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 6. Hypotenuse is 2 root 10. So it's going to be 6 over 2 root 10. So that simplifies to 3 over root 10. And then you just have to rationalize the denominator. So multiply by root 10 over root 10. And you end up with 3 root 10 over 10. Perfect. And then one more. I'm kind of running out of room. I think I can fit it. So the tangent of k. So tangent is just opposite over adjacent. So k opposite is 2. Adjacent is 6. So it's just going to be 2 over 6, which reduces to 1 over 3. Perfect. All right, so I have another one for us to do. So let's give that one a shot. All right. So we have another triangle. It's a right triangle, of course, MNO. And I have two hash marks here, which is showing that those two sides have the same measure. They're congruent. And then I know that the hypotenuse is 4 root 2. So again, we can't find the sine, cosine, and tangent unless we know the measures of all of the sides. So we can call side NO X. And then, because it has the same measure as side MN, we can call that X as well. And we could use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for X. So we will do X. Uh, x squared plus x squared equals 4 root 2 squared. So then x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. And then remember you distribute the squared to both. So 4 squared is 16 and root 2 squared is 2. So you end up with 2x squared equals 32. Divide both sides by 2 you end up with x squared equals 16. So then you take the square root of both sides and x equals 4. Perfect. So then I will just get rid of that x, delete this other x right here. Perfect. And I can replace it with 4 and 4. Now, I know we went through the Pythagorean theorem, and if that's what you had to do, then that's fine. But you may have recognized that it was a special right triangle, because if these two sides have the same measure, then that means these two angles are going to have the same measure. And if 90 degrees is already taken up by the right angle, you're left with 90. That must be divided by 2, so this is 45, 45. So you would have realized that you had a special right triangle, okay? A 45, 45, 90 right triangle, and then you know, oh, the hypotenuse is always x root 2. It's always whatever the length of one of the legs is, or both of the legs, times root 2. So if this is 4 root 2, then the measures of the legs are just 4. If you didn't recognize that, if you didn't realize that, and you went out and did the Pythagorean theorem, that's great. It works. And I would always tell my students, I don't care what way you do it as long as you don't break any math rules. So doing the Pythagorean theorem will take time. So if you're somebody that runs out of t uh, time on tests, I would try to recognize right away it's a special right triangle. But if you don't, that's okay. Just do the Pythagorean theorem. It'll get you the same answer. Okay. So now we're going to get the sine, cosine, and tangent of each angle. Well, each acute angle. So we will start with the sine of, let's do M first. Okay. So remember... Sokotoa always write it out perfect um, so angle M okay so we need to do opposite over hypotenuse so opposite is 4 hypotenuse is 4 root 2 so it's gonna be 4 over 4 root 2 which then simplifies to 1 over root 2 but remember we have to rationalize that denominator so multiply by root 2 over root 2, and you end up with root 2 over 2. Perfect. The cosine of angle M is just cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's angle M. So the adjacent side is this side. It's 4. And then the hypotenuse is 4 root 2. So now you've started to realize, look at this, it's the same as the sine. And that happens when it's a... 45, 45, 90, 
triangle. So then we don't need to do all this extra work. We know that it's going to simplify to root 2 over 2. And when you get to the study of the unit circle, which you may do in Algebra 2 or pre-calc slash advanced math, whatever your school calls it, you'll get into this more. And it's cool why this happens. Okay, so then now we just need the tangent of angle M. So that's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite is 4, adjacent is 4. So it's just 4 over 4, which equals 1. Perfect. Now I have a feeling you're going to start to see what's going to happen when we take the sine, cosine, and tangent of O. Okay, so the sine of angle O is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 4 root 2 which you recognize from up here and here. So you'll just know that that'll simplify to root 2 over 2. You don't have to do the extra math. Good. And then the cosine, hmm, I bet that's going to be the same thing. Adjacent side, 4 over hypotenuse, 4 root 2. So that, again, is going to simplify to root 2 over 2. Perfect. And then the last is the tangent of angle O, and that's going to be opposite, which is 4, over adjacent, which is 4. So 4 over 4, which is 1. And if you think about it, um, the measure of angle M equals the measure of angle O. So it would make sense that the sine, cosines, and tangents would all be the same. The ratios would all be the same because the angles are going to have the same measure. Okay? Very good. So one other cool thing I just like to tell you, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is if you look at the sine of m and you look at the cosine of m, they're the same. It's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So I want you to think about it. Think about m, angle m right here, and think about the opposite side. The opposite side is 4, Okay, and the adjacent side, adjacent side is also 4. So 4 equals 4, obviously, but that's what you notice is that the opposite side equals the adjacent side. So think about it. When you're, when you're doing opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse, you end up with opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, if opposite and adjacent have the same measure think about that, then this ratio, these two ratios will always be the same because the denominators are both hypotenuse and the numerators are always going to have the same measure. So that's why the sine and the cosine for both angle M and angle O are going to be the same. Great job and stay tuned for a few more videos.